Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Saturday. Hope we're having a wonderful start to the weekend out there. And luckily for most of us, we're going to actually have a pretty nice stretch of weather ahead. Now, uh, that won't be the case for everybody. Some folks definitely getting in on a bit of an active pattern here over the next couple of days, especially out west, where really, uh, honestly, the next week or so looks very active, much like the past week has been. Uh, but for those of us in the east, we do have a disturbance working on through right now. But after that works out tomorrow, we're going to have a nice couple of days before our next storm system. So uh, with all that said, this video likely will be a little bit more simplified and not too long. So probably uh, some good news for some of you folks who have you know been dealing with very active weather uh, really all winter so far. So we'll definitely enjoy this stretch of nicer weather. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now, I will ask if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We're only about 20 or 30 away from 8,000 now, so super exciting milestone that we could hit uh, probably definitely by the time this week is over, I would like to think. Uh, but again, if you haven't already, definitely help us get to that goal and just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, like the video if you like it, comment, let me know where you're watching from, what you're seeing out there, and I do apologize. I know I've not been super active in the comments the past couple of days. i uh, just been super busy doing uh, some homework and catching up on some other things uh, in life. So, you know, it's been a very productive couple of days, but with that, unfortunately, maybe not so much here on the YouTube side of things. Uh, now, with all that said, I guess we can go ahead and jump right into it and uh, start talking about what we're seeing out there. <clears throat> now, you'll notice uh, already on satellite imagery, again, not uh, anything too crazy. Again, we do have that one storm system that we've been talking about that is kind of bringing in a flow of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico, and we'll continue to bring some rain showers uh, over much of today and into tomorrow eventually as well. Now, out west, we still have kind of this atmospheric river, if you will, kind of slowly working inland, and we're in a little bit of a lull right now for most folks, but don't worry, uh, because things are going to pick back up once again here within the next couple of days. <clears throat> now, uh, everyone really east of the Mississippi is quite dry. Now, we do have some rain definitely to the south here, kind of into Louisiana, Mississippi itself, uh, Arkansas, and uh, much of eastern Texas. Uh, but outside of that, again, uh, really not too much falling from the sky here on this half of the country. It's more kind of the central part of the country and back west where things are a little bit more active here. So again, as I mentioned, that low pressure spinning away here over Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, and Colorado. Again, just pulling in that fetch of moisture here out of the Gulf and kind of just throwing all that moisture here into the Rocky Mountains. And because of that, we're getting big time snow totals today uh, from Colorado up through Wyoming, Montana, <clears throat> into Idaho, and down into Utah as well. Now, over the next couple of days, another storm system also likely to work on through, so we already have winter storm warnings in effect, as well as high wind warnings and wind advisories here through much of California, even flood watches uh, all the way down the coast into San Diego and LA. So, a very active stretch ahead for much of the state of California as well. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and start here. We'll start in the east, and then we'll talk about the west, and then we'll talk about the west a little bit more, as again, most of the active weather is out that way. And then finally, we'll kind of round out the video here talking about what's in store next week and kind of what the longer range pattern is looking like. All right, so here we go. And now uh, today, severe weather should stay pretty limited, maybe a couple of strong storms into the coastline of Texas and Louisiana, but really not too much to talk about. Tomorrow, though, that changes. We now have a uh, marginal and slight risk for severe weather through much of Florida, that marginal from Jacksonville down through Tampa, uh, down towards Fort Myers, uh, into kind of the northern sections of Miami Beach, and then up into uh, much of the east coast of Florida, and all points in between through the I-4 corridor. Now to the south of there, we have a slight risk of severe weather tomorrow from the Keys down into kind of the Everglades here and into Miami itself, where again, a couple strong storms, including a couple tornadoes, are not out of the question here as that storm system kind of cranks up and pulls a little bit closer in. All right, if I can uh, click the right button here, then we'll uh, move on here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, so here we go. Talking about the East Coast, over the next 48 hours or so, we'll kind of go ahead and start this afternoon here. And as I mentioned, much like radar showing, definitely a rainy day through Louisiana, East Texas, Arkansas, up through Kansas, uh, Nebraska, seeing some rain today as well. And that'll just kind of continue throughout the day as the slow pressure slowly spins away and just, again, pulling all of that moisture inland. So this is about 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central tonight, uh, obviously give or take a couple hours here. But uh, nonetheless, you'll notice, again, just this big plume of moisture from uh, New Orleans all the way up into much of Nebraska as this storm, again, just slowly cranks up and works on through. Now, overnight tonight, that rain will continue to fall, and by the time we're waking up tomorrow on our Sunday, likely probably commuting to church here, uh, again, very scattered, uh, you know, rain is still falling through Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, southern Missouri, Nebraska, and now that rain also pushing into uh, much of Mississippi, Alabama, South Georgia, and much of the Florida Peninsula, 
And from this point on is when we have that severe weather threat. You'll notice kind of down here into South Florida, some of these stronger returns showing up on radar, uh, just indicating that these storms are probably a little bit more powerful and same story up here as well, uh, up into the Florida Panhandle potentially. Now, as we move this a little bit further ahead into the day, what we have to watch out for is kind of at this point in the afternoon. You'll notice a bit of a dry slot kind of tries to work on into Florida here, and you might think, well, that's nice. We kind of dry out. The severe weather threat might die down. Uh, but unfortunately, what that might actually do is kind of re-amp uh, the atmosphere and uh, prepare it for even more thunderstorms. And we'll have to watch for a couple storms to maybe try to come in off the Gulf tomorrow afternoon. Those could try to work inland and produce a bit of a tornado threat. And even uh, maybe some strong storms there into uh, the southern sections of Georgia as well. I would not be surprised to see uh, the severe weather threat maybe lifted a little bit further north here into our overnight. As you'll notice again, uh, this is overnight Sunday into Monday. This kind of big area of strong convection kind of working on through uh, southern Georgia and maybe even up into the low country of South Carolina before, again, we're waking up here Monday morning, February the 5th, and the storm system is finally kind of starting to die down and move offshore. And we've just got some leftover scattered showers here and maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder uh, here into the immediate southeast, specifically the state of Florida for our Monday afternoon. All right, rainfall totals out here, definitely something that we should discuss here. It's going to be a fine line on who sees a pretty heavy dosing of rain and who sees nothing. You'll notice a very sharp cutoff here. Places like Greenville, Spartanburg, Columbia, uh, up through uh, Charlotte, Raleigh, and into kind of the mid-Atlantic here and the Ohio River Valley. Not any rain out of the system, which, again, about a week ago we were talking about maybe snow potential. Uh, now, nothing likely to fall from the sky whatsoever. So, uh, you know, maybe not the best uh, for those of you that wanted snow, but at least we get to kind of avoid the rain here. That'll definitely be some good news. Uh, but a good one to three inches of rain still on the way here from Florida through southern Georgia up into Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. Again, in this kind of swath of precipitation that is likely to fall over the next 48 hours or so. Alrighty, temperatures out here this afternoon, it's going to be kind of a mixed bag. We've actually got a little bit of cold air damming kind of here on the backside, so a pretty chilly day for much of the mid-Atlantic from South Carolina northbound, only likely getting up into the lower 50s, uh, not even getting above freezing through much of the uh, northeast there into New England. But some folks that are kind of on the warm side of the storm system or some of that warm air is getting pulled northward, we could have a pretty warm afternoon through uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia could get up into the 60s and maybe even 70s there uh, as indicated on this map here. Now the time we're waking up for our Sunday morning here, again, you'll notice here's that cold air damming, not hard to find here. You'll notice that cold air again kind of sinking into the back side of the Appalachia chain here, getting below freezing tomorrow morning for a lot of folks here from North Carolina uh, through South Carolina and uh, even up into much of the Ohio River Valley and Midwest, uh, getting pretty chilly tomorrow morning. Now tomorrow afternoon, honestly, likely going to be pretty similar to this afternoon. Uh, not that much different outside of those of us that are seeing rain. So Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, uh, where we might not be seeing the rain today, but we'll see it tomorrow, a much chillier day, only getting up into the 40s, uh, you know, with a very kind of cold, raw kind of day out there with warmer temperatures down into Florida, uh, where we kind of have some of that instability left over. Now, as I move this further ahead into time here, into our Monday morning, as far out as this model goes, again, more of the same, uh, probably much like tomorrow morning will be as well. So again, that's kind of what we're seeing in the temperature department here uh, on the eastern half of the country. All right, now tomorrow we also have a severe weather threat out west. Not something we see very often, but it's important enough we need to talk about it here. A marginal risk of severe weather through much of kind of uh, coastal central California here between the, uh, excuse me, between the bay and kind of down in towards uh, just really the central coast of California. I'm sorry, I'm not super well uh, versed on geography out into California. I'll do better. But either way, again, right here where you see that dark green on your map, that's where we're likely to see uh, the chance for a couple strong storms tomorrow, including the chance of an isolated tornado. I know it's not often we're talking about that in California, uh, but tomorrow afternoon is one of those days we definitely could see it. So we'll watch out for that. All right, so let's kind of break it down for you a little bit more out here. Starting into the Rockies, a snowy day today uh, for much of the uh, kind of Colorado higher terrains there up into Wyoming through Yellowstone and into Idaho and Montana, a very snowy day as well. Now, here we go overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Here comes that next storm into California. Big time snow breaking out into the Sierra Nevadas. Very heavy rain into the coast of California, and that just continues to slowly work on in here. Uh, getting into tomorrow afternoon, again, just a very rainy day or snowy day depending on elevation. 
Now, as the storm gets a little bit closer, and again, this kind of dry slot tries to work on in a little bit, we'll have to uh, watch for some of these storms to become strong. With strong straight line winds and brief isolated tornado, not out of the question as well here, as this very strong low pressure is slowly moving inland, as well as very strong gusty winds. Uh, so just kind of a bit of a um, rough day tomorrow for much of California for our Sunday. And this is getting overnight Sunday. This storm's still working in, bringing very strong winds, strong um, onshore flow with very heavy rainfall or very heavy mountain snow, again, through much of the Sierra Nevadas. Now, by the time we're waking up Monday morning, just more of the same. The storm system slowly pulling a little bit further north, now bringing that unsettled weather through Oregon, Washington, uh, Idaho, Montana. Again, a lot of us getting in on just uh, this very wet and snowy pattern out west. And that will continue here. If we take a look at our GFS model going into this week ahead, I'm going to kind of breeze through this a little bit. But Monday afternoon, again, more of the same. You know, rain for the uh, coastline and the lower elevations, snow for the higher terrains. Tuesday afternoon, a little bit of a lull as the storm kind of moves towards the four quarters a little bit. Now bringing that unsettled weather through Nevada, Southern California, uh, into Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, excuse me, I don't know why I keep calling Colorado Wyoming, probably because they look the exact same on a map, but uh, Colorado and New Mexico here, again, seeing some of that unsettled weather Tuesday afternoon. And then Wednesday afternoon, the Rockies again still getting in on that uh, widespread mountain snow and uh, valley rain as we get a little bit of a break out further west towards California and Nevada. And then again, going later on into the week, here's Thursday afternoon, another storm system working on in, bringing more rain and snowfall before I think finally going into next weekend, we get a little bit of a lull. This is next Saturday. I think the pattern should change a little bit more and kind of this onslaught of onshore flow should calm down a little bit and we should dry out a, a little bit more here going towards the middle of February. So again, very active pattern out west. How much snow? Well, this is through the next seven to 10 days or so, and you'll notice uh, the map is full here. So higher trains of Idaho um, here into Montana and into Wyoming, isolated spots here uh, could get multiple feet of snow, not out of the question. Same story for the higher trains of Oregon here up into Washington state, into the Cascades. Again, a good dumping of snow. The real winters, though, again, really going to be into the Sierra Nevadas, where these storms are really kind of pushing in and just bringing, you know, tremendous amounts of, uh, you know, available liquid precipitation here, just kind of, you know, hovering over this part of the mountain chain, 113 inches of snow in this time frame. So, again, uh, those of us in the east might be thinking, well, that's pretty insane, and, uh, you know, it definitely is a lot of snow, but not too out of the ordinary here uh, for this part of the world this time of the year, but still nonetheless quite interesting. Alrighty, so that's kind of uh, out west throughout the next week. What about those of us in the east? What can we expect over the same time frame? Well, I talked about this a little bit in yesterday's video, but a little bit of a lull, I think, uh, really through much of the middle of next week. And in fact, it's going to feel quite nice. As we have all of this troughing out west with these uh, active storm systems, we've got a major ridge in the east, and this is going to allow for a lot of very warm air from kind of the equatorial regions here to uh, kind of get pulled northward. And again, it's going to be a really spring-like week for much of the central part of the country early next week and eventually getting into the eastern half of the country later next week. Uh, this is a big time signal for warm weather here. Uh, again, this is next Thursday here for much of the eastern seaboard before eventually, I think, kind of going into the longer range about seven to ten days from now, uh, the pattern breaks down and all that stormy weather out west finally kind of makes it over the Rocky Mountains. And we could have a couple storm systems track eastbound here and uh, maybe even hook up with some colder air here going into the middle of the month as indicated here by kind of this troughing and these blue uh, isobars on your map. So uh, again, kind of interesting there. We'll definitely watch that uh, here in the long run. Now, uh, the next map I'm going to show you, if I had it prepared a little bit better at least, uh, are uh, temperatures here at the surface, and this is for all of North America, but uh, nonetheless you get the point. Uh, quite warm this afternoon for many folks. Uh, going into early next week, again, a little bit of a cool down in the east as uh, that uh, cold air damming and that storm system works on through uh, that we kind of talked about earlier, but don't worry, not far behind it, all of this red on the map, and by the time we're getting into next Friday afternoon, just about everyone east of the Rockies is pretty well above average here. Likely uh, 5 to 15 degrees above what we should be this time of year, maybe even more than that. Uh, this is actually in Celsius here, so um, you know what? I can go ahead and just zoom in instead of uh, making you try to uh, decipher Celsius because I know us Americans are probably not the best at doing that. Um, no offense, but you know, it's just something we're not really built for. Uh, anyway, though, as I was saying, Friday afternoon, again, temperatures here potentially 20 degrees Fahrenheit above what they should be this time of year uh, through much of the Ohio River Valley, about 10, 15 degrees above what they should be through the eastern seaboard. 
And again, just a really nice stretch of warm weather before eventually, again, that colder air, I think, kind of works back in the following week. You'll notice these temperatures kind of uh, cooling on down a little bit more, and eventually these blues really taking over by the time we get into the middle of the month. So if I were you, I'd get out there. I'd enjoy uh, that kind of warmer weather while we have it because, again, there's uh, plenty of winter left here to kind of ring out some more cold shots before spring really takes over uh, kind of by the time we get into late March and into April. All right, now one thing I am watching, again, very active weather out west. This is early next week, Monday, Tuesday. You'll notice all of the uh, you know ongoing active stuff kind of into the Rockies and west coast. It stays out there into the middle of next week, but by the time we get later on into next week, uh, one of those storm systems likely tries to finally make it over the mountain chain, and here we are next Thursday. We've got some rain breaking out uh, into the Great Plains, snow to the north of there, and that storm system could eventually work eastbound and bring a return to some scattered precipitation. Uh, before eventually maybe even another storm system kind of tries to work out of the west. Uh, so again, pretty quiet now through the middle of next week. After that, we watch for the pattern to start changing as these storm systems slowly work further and further east. And something I'm also watching, again, towards the middle of the month, as these storms get a little bit closer and as they cross on through, uh, likely a couple wet systems, but on the backside, cold air could try to spill back in. And should that happen, we could get a return back towards the wintry side of things here. Uh, going on into the middle and second half of February. So again, uh, kind of a bit of a lull right now for some folks, but uh, things should pick back up here about seven to 10 days from now, and uh, we'll kind of see what happens there into the middle of the month. Uh, now with that said, I appreciate you all hanging in there with me. Hope you have a great rest of your Saturday, and I'll see you all tomorrow.